Okay. God bless you all. Invite and share. We're going to do this quick on Pride. It's going to be good. Invite and share. Invite and share. We're going to have an unusual, unusual soap scope. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. God bless everyone. Hey, hey. Greetings from Reno. Greetings, greetings. Greetings. You know what? You know what you all? Should I do that, Holy Ghost? Okay. Hello, hello. Dr. Kalicia, I, I sent you the information, by the way. Praise God for Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Praise God for Reno. I see you on here. God bless everyone. This is going to be really, really good. Hello, hello. How are we? God bless, God bless you all. Grace and peace from New York City. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, we got something really, really tripped out today. All right. Philly is in the building. All right, we're going to say a prayer for Ariel. I'm really stirred to really touch on this thing of pride. Okay, she's in the ER right now. Really, what is she on the ER from? What is she in the ER from? You know what she's in the ER from? Hey, hey, how you doing? Okay, you all, we're about to, I really want to do this thing on pride. And in order for us to do it on pride, I'm really going to have to lay some foundation. Um, let's release that prayer for Ariel right now. What's going on with, with, with her? You said kidney stones? Kidney stones? Bless it, bless it, bless it. How you doing? I promise you, you all are really going to enjoy what we're about to do. But let, let's say this prayer real quick because they're in the emergency room. Hey, Tokyo. Hey, Baton Rouge. Father, we just thank you for the sister that is in the um, in the emergency room that they just did a CT scan on. Father, I thank you that your eyes are in every place. So your eyes are even there in the emergency room right now. So, Father, we just touch and agree with what it is that you have spoken over her life from heaven in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord God that her kidneys will function properly in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you that even as she is in that room right now Lord you are positioning her even with the doctors even with the nurses Lord with the tech aides with the people that you desire to, to work on her behalf right now Lord I thank you that she is being nursed she is being restored to health in the name of Jesus Lord if there's any donor any anything going on like that Lord God um, that she needs I thank you, Lord God, that you are going to release that to her. I thank you that she will be a testimony. She will be able to say that the Lord healed me for you are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. So, Lord, we just even send that saving power even into that emergency room right now. In the name of Jesus, we lose blessings over her, Father. In Jesus' name, we say, be ye healed. Amen. Hallelujah. You all, it is something really, really different and unusual that we're about to do um, on this particular scope right now. Something really different and really unusual. And it is going to be on the subject of pride, okay? We're really about to go in on pride because I told you we're going in on the throne room. And one of the things about the throne room that will keep us out of the throne room is pride. So I hope everybody has invited and shared um, because I promise you, you're about to hear some stuff that's about to really trip you out right now. OK. All right. Amen. So I see what people are inviting and sharing. Um, I know a lot of us have heard things about pride. Um, a lot of us have heard a lot of things about pride. OK. Um, and, you know, we've been focusing on the throne room. So I just want to just start right here. All right. And I'm going to start from here. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 and 17. It says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, 
a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. Now, I won't go into the rest. I want to start with that first thing. Now, if you notice, the first thing that the Lord says that he hates is a proud look. Pride. Now, me personally, I would have thought the first thing he hated would have been lie. Lying. But why do you think he says pride first? Because pride is the thing that actually got Satan kicked out of heaven. Pride is the original sin. If you ever go to, I want you all to go to, um, if you get a chance, I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 14, okay? Because this is very powerful as you said, uh, um, um, what I'm going to tie this together with is our pride. God hates pride. And remember, hate is an intense dislike for something. But just how God hates pride, pride hates God. I'm going to say that again. Just that God hates pride, pride hates God. So when we're acting prideful, we are actually, our actions are actually saying, God, I hate you. Okay. And I'm going to show you how it shows that in the scripture. Okay. So th this is not something that I'm making up. This is actually in the scripture. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. Okay. It says in Isaiah 14, 13 through 14. And let me say this prayer real quick. Father, even we love you. And even as we are touching on a topic so sensitive as this, Lord God, this topic of pride is such a sensitive topic, but we know that pride is something that you hate. So, Father, we ask now that we would humble ourselves. Lord, may we be humble right now to receive what it is that you are saying from your throne concerning pride. Lord, I pray that the entrance of your word will bring light in our situation, Lord, and that it will set us free from any pride and any deception that we are walking in now, that we may be able to move into the ne next realm of revelation, that we may be able to move in the next realm of favor and promotion that you have for us. So our ears are open and our hearts are open to hear what it is that you have to say. Lord, we detach ourselves from any mindsets. Lord, everything that we know up to this point, Lord, we say we don't know it as we ought to know it. So we open ourselves to you now. Mm. Lord, I pray that you will help this word to be ministered in the way that you want it ministered. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so yeah, you know what? I was going to get to that. Now, check this out. Let's go to the root. With, with, and this is meditation. So if you all are saying, what does this have to do with soap scope? One of the definitions of meditation is study. Okay. And so we're meditating on the word as we study. So let's look at Isaiah chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. And it says, actually, I'm going to start at verse 12. Verse 12 says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Now, you notice how it says Lucifer, which was Satan's name when he was in heaven. He's not Lucifer anymore. He's Satan now. When he was in heaven, he was Lucifer. Okay. And the Bible says, how art thou fallen from heaven? So it's showing Lucifer fell from heaven. So he was in a heavenly place. All right. And I'm using certain words to relate it to you and I, because you and I are in the heavenly place. But this is going to show you what made Lucifer fall out of heaven, fall out of the presence of God. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I want you to notice what Lucifer said in his heart, because pride starts in the heart. I want you to notice, I will ascend unto heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. If you notice, Lucifer was, I will, I will, I will, I will. Okay. Whereas the opposite with him and Jesus was, Jesus was nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. So notice what got Lucifer kicked out of heaven, his pride. Pride is I will. Okay. I will ascend into heaven. And then notice 
not only ascend into heaven, he will exalt his throne above the stars of God. He said he's going to sit upon the mounts of the congregation. Now, how does this relate to pride? Pride is when you exalt yourself. Lucifer was exalting himself and we know he was exalting himself because he was saying, I will, I will. Hey, NFBG, I will, I will. And so through Lucifer or Satan trying to exalt himself on the level of God, this is what got him kicked out of heaven. And it's the same with you and I. When we are operating in pride, pride, pride will keep you from the presence of God. There's actually a scripture that shows that we're going to get to in a minute. OK, so that's the original sin. The original sin is that pride, because what does pride do? Pride puts us in competition with God. I'm going to say that again. Pride puts us in competition with God. If you notice, Lucifer's or Satan's pride put him in competition with God. So when you and I are being prideful, and this might sting, look, this is for all of us. This is for me too. When we're walking in pride, that means we're competing with God. We are competing with God himself. And if you notice, what does God say about that in James 4, 6? He resists the proud. Another word for resist is fight. When you're competing with something, you're fighting with it. So this is why he resists the proud. He fights the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Imagine getting in a fight with God. Do you know that when we're prideful, we're setting ourselves up to fight God? That's what we do. When we're walking in pride, we're literally putting our fist up and saying, I'm fighting you now, God. Come on, bring it on. I'm fighting you. Because I forget your way. My way is better. Now, let's let's go even deeper with this. I pray that you all are getting something. A lot of us hear that Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed because of homosexuality. But the Bible tells us differently. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 16. Remember, this is still Sotsko we're studying right now. Okay? Ezekiel 16, verse 49. It says... Sodom, Ezekiel 16, verse 49. Yeah, here we go. Come on now. Come on now. We going somewhere. It doesn't say, it, it says gay pride. You got to be, well, watch the devil. Look how the devil is tricky with that thing. Ezekiel 16, verse 49 says, Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. I want you to listen to what Sodom's iniquity was. Pride. It's the first thing he said pride fullness of bread and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters so nowhere in here does it say homosexuality is what brought Sodom down in this passage it says it was pride okay because see once pride comes pride exalts you and it puffs you up once it puffs you up, it begins to blind you to the ways of God. So now the only thing that you can see is a perverted way. So this is what opens the door for perversion is the pride. Ezekiel 16. This is why pride is so dangerous. All right. Now, I want to bring you to another scripture of how pride affects our relationship with Jesus. Go to John chapter 12. See, pride, pride is super dangerous. I just showed you that pride was the thing that got Satan kicked out of heaven. So nothing has changed. See, God hates the thing that got, because look what pride did. Pride literally tried to exalt itself against God. Pride basically says, I want to take over heaven. Think about this. God is love himself. But pride made Satan say, you know what? I hate you, love. I want to be over you. That's what pride did. I want to be over you. I want to put you out and be exalted over you. Love itself. This is why God hates pride. This is why pride is so dangerous because pride tried to take over heaven itself. Pride tried to conquer the one that we sit and pray to and say is good. Pride tried to conquer that. So when we are operating in the spirit of pride, we are operating in the exact same spirit that tried to conquer heaven. It tried to kill God. That's how dangerous pride is. Pride will try to murder God. 
Like are you, are you all really getting that revelation? It would try to murder God. John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Verse 42 and 43. This is really going to trip you out. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. So it's talking about how the Pharisees, there were some Pharisees that believed in Jesus, but they didn't confess it publicly. Now I want you to see why in verse 43. For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. So the reason they did not profess Jesus was because they 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 were more concerned with the things of man more than the things of God. They were more concerned with how men saw them. They wanted to be puffed up and exalted by men more than being puffed up and exalted by God. So as a result, this is what helped lead to Jesus being murdered. I want to show the correlation between pride and how pride hates God so much it will kill him. Now, maybe you didn't really get what I'm trying to say right there. Well, this part is going to bring it home. Go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 23. Now, all of us know this, this passage. This is a familiar passage. But I want to highlight something that's not talked about often when this passage is talked about. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 22 through 23, it says, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, said, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Now, what Peter is doing is Peter was rebuking Jesus because Jesus told him how he had to suffer all these things and then die and be raised again. Right. And so you would think Peter was doing something innocent. Right. Like, no, Lord, we're not going to let that happen to you. All right. But I want you to see what happened in verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. All right. So Jesus is now directly talking, not just directly talking to Satan. Satan, this is just anybody to Jesus. Remember, Jesus said he beheld Lucifer fall as lightning. Remember, Jesus said in the scriptures, he told the Pharisees how he saw Lucifer fall. He saw him fall. I think that was the Pharisees he was talking to. But there's a scripture where Jesus says how he beheld Lucifer fall. Right. Or Satan fall. And so this is the same Satan he's talking to. Jesus was there when Satan fell because of his pride. He saw the reason why he fell. He saw when Satan tried to exalt himself and when he got kicked out. So Jesus, when he's speaking to him, he's speaking to Satan in the original identity of who he is. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense to me. Now, I want you to pay attention to this last part. This is the key. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. He's it now. Another word for savor is like. You don't like the things of God. You like the things of man. Now, I want you to think about that for a second. It didn't say that Satan likes the things of the devil. It said he likes the things of man. The verse in um, John was John chapter 12, verses 42 through 43. This is Matthew 16. Matthew 16, verse 23. Okay. Wow, Dr. Khaleesi. Wow. So I want you to listen to this. Right. Right. Peep this. I'm going to say it again. Satan doesn't like the things of Satan. Satan doesn't like the things of hell. It didn't say Satan likes the demonic. Satan likes. So what makes Satan demonic then? He likes the things of man. Think about that. He likes the things of man. So when we walk in our fleshly stuff, Satan loves it. He's like, yes, this is what I'm on right now. He loves the things of man. And so in that verse that I just showed you in John, what made the Pharisees not want to profess Jesus? Because they loved the praise of man. Think about that for a second. So what are the things of man? All right. This is just some stuff to ponder before we meditate. What are the things of man? OK, what are the things of man? These things right here are the things that keep us away from the presence of God. All right. Now, Ephesians 2, 6 says we are in heavenly places. 
We just showed how what got Satan booted out of the heavenly place. I want you all to go to Isaiah 57 verse 15. I want to show you two things about the presence. Because remember, we're talking about the throne room, but this also has to do with meditation. Sometimes when we meditate, and, and this isn't to condemn anybody because this has happened to me too before. Sometimes when you meditate, you might be like, for some reason, this thing really isn't, I don't know. It's just really not sitting with me right now. I'm not really getting anything from it. So your flesh is going to tell you what? Oh man, this thing ain't for me. I'll wait till he does a scripture that I can really get. Well, there's a serious problem with that because it's the word that created us. This essence, this is supposed to flow out of us. Anything Jesus loves, we should love. Anything Jesus hates, we should hate. And he loves his word. Psalms 138 verse 2 says he magnifies it above all he names. So therefore, that means there's an area in our heart where we need to surrender more. We should be so sensitive that just like it says in Luke, this word shall burn in our heart. If we're not feeling that burning, there's another level of dying. We can do another level of surrender. But look at Isaiah 57 verse 15. This is a tripped out verse because this talks about God's posse. You know, God got a posse. He got an entourage. I want, I want to show you what God's click is. All right, let's look at God's click. It says, for thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity. I love it when the Lord talks like that. He like, look, I'm the high and lofty one. And he's humble. So, man, like, I want to get to that point. How, what Thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabited eternity, whose name is holy. Listen to this. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. So God's posse, you all, the people that he dwells with, are those that are contrite and humble. The ones that are humble, that's who he says I dwell with. That's who I rock with. I rock with the humble cats. Said I don't rock with the, with the proud, with the puffed up people. Nah, we, we kick them up out of here because they be hating, okay? They be hating, all right? I rock with the humble ones, all right? Now, let me go a step deeper with the, with the hate, okay? With the hate because we just saw how Satan said, how the Lord told Satan, you don't like the things of God, you like the things of man, okay? You don't like the things of God, you like the things of man. And so, since he likes the things of man, he hates the things of God, okay? Satan hates the things of God, and I'm going to say it again, pride hates God. So when we're acting prideful, we're acting in a way that's saying, God, I hate you. I hate your way. I'm going to do this my way because I hate your way. Okay, we could be prideful in a lot of different ways. Pride goes a lot of ways. We could have religious pride. We could have a thing of, well, I know what I'm doing is wrong, but you know what? <laughs> Whatever. I know what I'm saying to this person is bogus right here, but you know what? Whatever. They're going to feel this thing. They should have never told me that. When we're doing that, you know what we're saying? God, I hate you. That's what you're saying. Man, that's deep. Give you a sailor moment on that. That's for all of us. This is not to beat anybody up. This is for me too. Okay? This is for me too. Mm. I wanna I wanna bring up the the um I wanna bring up a definition of that word hate. The word hate, you all. I got it written down. Hate means intense and passionate dislike. Loathe. It also means intense hostility and aversion. Now listen to what Miriam Webster said, you all. Listen to this. It says intense hostility and aversion, usually deriving from, listen to this, usually deriving from fear, anger, or sense of injury. So the Miriam Webster, Webster Dictionary is telling us that pride, I mean that, that hate, I'm sorry, that hate comes from fear, hate comes from anger, and hate comes from sense of injury. That means when we when we get fearful, that opens up the door for hate or that opens up the door for pride because pride hates the things of God. So when we get fearful, when we have it, think about it. A lot of people, a lot of times when we walk in pride, it's to cover up some empty space that we have on the inside of us. It's to cover up an insecurity. So when we get fearful, we open the door for pride. 
Okay, because fear is basically saying, that's right, pride is a protective covering. And the Lord is saying, I have not given you the spirit of fear. So if he hasn't given us the spirit of fear, who has? Hmm. Say lie on that for a minute. All right. But then it says anger, anger. So anger opens the door for hate or for pride. We get so mad. And then remember, there's a scripture that says with pride cometh contention. With pride cometh contention. Mm. Now, check this out. It says, or sense of injury. A lot of times when we feel like we're hurt, somebody has hurt us, that could make us very prideful. This is what opens the door for the hard heart. A lot of times people leave the church, not because of what the whole church is doing, but maybe because of what one person did to them, or maybe two people did to them. It could be 300 people in the church, and we'll leave off of what two or three people did. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. Maybe 10 people did something hurtful to you in the church, but the other 290 were cool. And then a lot of times it won't even be the pastor. I'm not saying, if, you know, um, I'm not I'm not saying it's concerning if the pastor is real bogus or something. But a lot of times it won't even be the pastor. It'll be a couple of members you ran into that were bogus. And because of that hurt, you know, the Lord never told you to lead a church in the first place. But our pride, we covered up our heart. And now our pride took over. And pride, you all, makes us blind. It shows you. Think about this. If Satan really knew, if he really knew, like, his end, he would have never done what he did. Like, like, really think about that stuff for a second. If he knew that by him having Jesus killed, it was going to represent him being defeated. Do you think he would have really had Jesus killed? No. But guess what, you all? Satan is still operating in pride. Hello? Satan is still in pride. He's in pride. This is why he loves the things of man. So when we sit and we walk in pride, we are walking in hate towards God. We are saying, God, I hate you. Hmm. That's a strong word, but it's so true. God, I hate you. That's what we do when 